But here in the Chinle Formation, you get some really spectacular colored rocks, and that's why it's also called the Painted Desert. So it's the Petrified Forest Painted Desert. It's all kind of a one-stop shop for all. Now, also evidence for marine deposition is there are some layers in here occasionally of limestone. Uh, limestone normally forms in a marine environment or an ocean environment. Here we are at another location at Petrified Forest National Park. This is the Blue Mesa member behind me. So you see a little bit different rock, you know, part of that same Chinle formation, but now we're looking at a different member of it called the Blue Mesa member. And we're actually standing on Blue Mesa. And ironically enough, I'm standing on cross bedded sands that kind of cap the top of the Blue Mesa. And so this kind of protected this area from eroding away, uh, just like the basalts protected uh, what we saw earlier protected the rocks below it. Here we have a protective cap of sandstones, but they're cross bedded sandstones. I'm actually standing on cross beds. So the rocks in here are essentially flat, but you see all these sandstone layers all at an angle. The direction of flow would be right toward you. And so this would be the lee side of these water driven waves that are dropping off these, making the cross bedded sands. So cross bedded sands tell us they were deposited by water and there was a very probably high flow, high energy flow. Now below this, we have slower energy, clay rich and ash rich deposits. And the reason they're blue here in different colors than we saw earlier is because there's more manganese in these minerals. So you have hematite that makes the red and the manganese makes the, the blues and the grays. And so you have different minerals in the rocks being deposited or maybe some of the groundwater percolating through as well. Uh, but that's why you see these really different colors. And again, you don't see these variety of colors when you look at the Triassic equivalent rocks in Wyoming, they're mostly just red. But here in the Chinle Formation, you get some really spectacular colored rocks, and that's why it's also called the Painted Desert. So it's the Petrified Forest Painted Desert. It's all kind of a one-stop shop for all. Now also evidence for marine deposition is there are some layers in here occasionally of limestone. And so you get limestone layers. Uh, limestone normally forms in a marine environment or an ocean environment. Uh, they, again, the evolutionists try to say these are freshwater limestones, uh, because it doesn't fit their story. So they argue that these are all deposited by streams and these are stream deposits here that I'm standing on. Uh, but again, stream deposits aren't this extensive. You can't look across the horizon and see the same layers going and going and going as far as you can see. So really what we're standing on really, again, is evidence, strong evidence of the flood. A high energy, uh, the fluctuations of these tsunami-like waves, very little bit, you got higher energy, lower energy, and that's what results in the different types of rocks we see here behind us. We also had a lot of ash that was being deposited here as well, and that helped to petrify those trees, but the ash was really beginning to peak in the Absaric Omega sequence, which these are deposited in. And then it continued more and more and more into the Zuni Mega sequence and into the Teos Mega sequence, and ultimately all these volcanic eruptions that were very explosive, spread ash across the country and across the world, all contributed to the post-flood ice age by cooling the earth, cooling the earth's atmosphere for hundreds of years after the flood to help to bring on the massive ice sheets that we saw as evidence of the ice age. So it's all kind of beginning right here, you know, in the Abserico, when you start to flood the land, you start to get a mixture of land and marine animals. Uh, we're, we're kind of seeing it all kind of coming together here. It's not a coincidence that all this is happening right at this level in the flood, because this is when the sea floor is really starting to be created in earnest, as I call it, really high uh, seafloor production started in the Abserica, and that's also caused the subduction, which made the volcanic ash, from the volcanoes. Uh, but it all kind of works out together. The more seafloor you make, the higher the water went. So here we're now seeing water that went high enough to start flooding the land. And so there really is powerful evidence in this park of a global flood.